Hey everyone, I want to make this five minute guide on the class that everyone needs but never wants to play, the Malak. Hope you enjoy. Alright everyone, let's jump straight into it. I'm going to go into the talents first. This is my current talent build. I think that things like improved health zone are very important over stamina and your build changes slightly with how much hit you have. Uh, say for example, I have... 11% uh, hit that means I'm gonna need two points into suppression so I can hit 13% and then I'll get three more from misery From my raid and then I'll get another percent from a drain eye So I'm good to go there So if I had 12% I would drop a point in this and I could put it into something like I can put another point in nemesis You can grab the crit if you want. I don't like the crit. Yeah, I can put it more in the stamina You can put it in intensity you have a few options here for our consumes we have spell power food, which is very important because your spell power is spell power for the entire raid. We have flasks, which is an extra 12, 12 spell power for the entire raid. We have wild magic pots. I usually use two wild magic pots. If you're a little more DPS oriented and you have a second demo, you could also use potion of speed. Uh, we also use spice mammoth treats, which increase the damage of your fell guard and give it a little bit of extra survivability, which is very nice. We have our spell stone, which we generate, so you don't really have to worry about. And we also have flame caps. Flame caps are very nice for execute with soul fire damage. And you could also flame cap in the beginning if it's a short fight to get your ammo aura, the flame cap damage as well. Getting into the rotation, we want to make sure a few buffs are up beforehand. We want to make sure our fail guard's out. We want to make sure it has soul link, which reduces the damage that you take. You want to make sure you have fell armor, and you want to make sure you have a stone spell stone is the best stone to use and the opener that i like to use is i always pre pre life tap and pre wild magic wild magic over the haste for the demonic pack buff so boom boom i pre cast shadow bolt send my pet in immediately emily corruption meta i doom as i walk in and then I keybind Demonic Empowerment and Immolation all together, boom, and it has my gloves in there as well, and then you get into a maintenance rotation. Some people ask me, why do I put on my dots before I meta? And I like to do the Immolate Corruption, so I could get into position to Immo Aura. You could also do the Life Tap, Pre-Pot, Shadow Bolt, Meta, Immolate Corruption, Doom, as you're moving in into the immolation aura or you could use demonic empowerment on a different time because it's off the global cooldown but this is just how i like to operate now for the maintenance and the rotation the most important thing is your pet your pet needs to stay alive for your buff and your buff gives the entire raid a marginal not a marginal a lot of spell power this is this is with no buffs You're, you give the entire raid 300 spell power this is the most important thing for you to do when in the rotation you have to keep up life tap and shadow bolt these are the two highest priority things then your dots and then you kind of just maintain this you maintain your dots while spamming shadow bolt as a filler until execute execute changes the rotation a little bit but your corruption has a chance to proc molten core and molten core increases the damage of your incinerates by 18% and gives you 30% reduced cast time. So it's like boom, boom, boom. You could rip those out. And you have a chance to save, you, you can save those or you could use those immediately depending on where you are in the fight or what dots you have up. I typically like to use them sooner rather than later. And it's very important to keep corruption up to generate those molten core rocks. Now, I want to talk about uh, decimate which is the core feature of the execute of the demo lock when you shadow bolt or incinerate you when the targets below 35 percent you get soul fire reduced by 40 percent and it costs no shard so how the execute's gonna look is we're gonna have our dots up on the target for example uh we're hitting we're hitting we're doing whatever uh boom target hits 35 percent the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to keep corruption up you must keep corruption up because corruption is the thing that procs molten core which will increase your soul fires damage during execute and has three charges in addition to that we will put up immolate if we get a full duration a soul fire during execute will do more than immolate if you are on the move then you could put up immolate 
because you won't have the time to put up so far and then it kind of evens out and same thing with doom slash agony uh if you have the full minute you can put up the doom that's fine that doesn't take much out of your rotation especially if you're moving but agony is not worth the gcd unless you're moving and you have nothing else to cast so going over it again during execute you will use corruption keep corruption upon the target for these molten core procs these major molten core procs you will use immolate if you get the full duration or if you're about to move and then you will doom if you get the full minute or agony on the move or don't use this at all it is much better to use the soul fire make sure to use your gloves on cooldown your meta when it comes back up and demonic empowerment as you go I just want to reiterate how important this buff is to the raid. This is basically the entire reason Demo Locks get funneled gear and why they are brought to the raid. And there's things you could do to optimize this, like we're free pawning wild magic, correct? I see that my trinkets have off cooldown and my cloak is not. What I could do is I can wait for my trinket to pop up and I could pop my wild magic now and maybe my pet will crit and then we could get a bigger buff. Utilizing your trinkets with your pot will lead to an overall DPS increase for the entire raid. A pro tip I want to talk about is the use of rank 1 Shadow Bolt. As you can see at the at the tooltip at the bottom over there, rank 1 Shadow Bolt is about 1 second cast. Now if I go to my rank 13 Shadow Bolt, it is a 2 second cast. That 1 second makes a big difference because you have to account for travel time. So any fight where there's ads, Little ads that are spawning that you guys are cleaving down, say a uh, hoe deer during the flash freezes, or you have Algalon with the stars. What you would do is you would look for one that's dr like draining HP or getting cleaved or something, and then you would be hitting the target. You would have all your dots up. You would have life tap up. You'd be going, you'd be going, you'd be going. Boom, little rank one shadow bolt, and then it would proc your soul fire for decimation. And look, I had a perfectly timed Molten Core too. So I would be pounding Soul Fires right now with Molten Core procs and be massive damage. And the mastery of being able to rank one Shadow Bolt Snipe adds really makes a difference in looking at Warlock damage. Like if you look at logs of great Demo Locks, they'll have a lot more Soul Fire damage than the other Warlocks on multi, multi fights. Hey guys, thanks for making it this far into the video. I pride myself on being a good warlock. Hope this is a little bit of evidence of that to show that I know where I'm coming from. And I hope this gives you a little bit of, of leeway and, and help when you're going demo for 10 mans because nobody's going to want to take an affliction and you're going to have to learn how to play demo very quickly. So if you like what you saw, please drop a subscribe. Helps the channel a ton, helps visibility, and I appreciate your time and I hope to catch you next time. Peace.